Hey y'all, Coach Nafai here, talking about the fast of the fourth month. Now, we are in the fourth month according to the Enoch calendar. Thanks to the book of Enoch, we have a way of calibrating our calendar every year, even every season. So, whereas the Jewish community is off by a month in their holy day celebrations for the year 2021 because we follow the scripture of Enoch we're able to reset our calendar to make sure that we are in the correct month for the year 2021 and every year that's one of the reasons behind the days of remembrance that you read about in the book of Enoch and in the book of Jubilees but we cover those days in other classes in this class, we want to pay particularly close attention to what Zechariah chapter 8 is talking about in verse 19 when it says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth month, the fast of the seventh month, and the fast of the tenth month shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. So this is talking about these fasts here, one in the fifth one in the fourth, one in the tenth, and one in the seventh month. These are fasting days remembering tragic events that happened in the Bible. Now, the fast of the fifth month is talking about what we read about with Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, coming into Jerusalem. We see this in 2 Kings chapter 25. It's actually related to the burning of Solomon's temple. Well, we also see in 2 Kings chapter 25 when it's talking about the 10th month and the 10th day of the 10th month. That is also one of these four fast days, the 5th month, the 10th month, and then the fast of the 7th month would be what we call the Day of Atonement that we read about in Leviticus chapter 23 that occurs on the 10th day of the 7th month. Well, that actually creates a pattern for us when we have the fast of the fifth month falling on the 10th day of the month, the fast of the seventh month falling on the 10th day of the month, the fast of the 10th day falling on the 10th day of the 10th month. And as it turns out, the fast of the fourth month is pointing to an event that occurs on the ninth day of the fourth month. You see in 2 Kings chapter 25 that this is when the famine prevailed in the city, talking about Jerusalem as part of the besiegement. They actually closed the city off so that nobody could bring food in for the people and they starved. The way I read these scriptures, it is in the fourth month that this starvation period actually came to a climax. You see in Jeremiah chapter 39, it describes it as the day in which the city was broken up, talking about the ninth day of the fourth month. That brings me to another point, and that is the minor Jewish feasts and how they actually have a minor festival on the 17th day of the fourth month instead of the ninth day of the fourth month. But when I go to the Bible and do a search for the 17th day of the month, I don't find any events occurring on the 17th day of any month, except when you're talking about the floodwaters of Noah that you read about in Genesis chapter 7 and chapter 8. It was on the 17th day of the second month that the fountains of the deep were broken up, but we find nothing in the fourth month. So there is no biblical reference for them celebrating the fast on the 17th day of the fourth month, whereas there is a biblical reference for the ninth day of the fourth month. What is also interesting is that there is a minor Jewish festival celebrating the ninth of the fifth month. But again, there is no biblical reference for any event occurring in the Bible on the ninth of the fifth month. However, when we're looking at Jeremiah chapter 52, we see that the fast of the fifth month should actually occur on the 10th day of the fifth month or the 10th of Av 
instead of the knife of Av. So I'm wondering if some of these guys who set these feast days didn't get a little bit confused, whereas they should have been celebrating the ninth day of the fourth month. They are actually celebrating the ninth day of the fifth month. And they're forgetting to celebrate the ninth day of the fourth month altogether. So we'll continue to ignore the Jewish community as we learn their errors when it comes to the Father sacred calendar. And we'll actually work to do these days on the correct day. And since we have biblical references for the ninth of the fourth month, that is the day in which we'll be performing this fast of the fourth month. So when is it? Now, we can find a new moon report at truthofyahweh.org. This is a website that allows people from around the world to document their verification of the new moon every month. And when we look at this report, we see that it was documented by over a dozen people that the new moon was sighted on the evening of July the 11th in the year 2021. Okay, so here is a monthly calendar that I created to display the relationship between the Gregorian calendar and the sacred calendar. And the way it works is I put in the date of the moon sighting, which was on June the 11th, making the daylight hours of July the 12th the day of the new moon or the new moon day or the first day of the month, making the ninth day of the fourth month, July the 20th. Now, of course, it would start on the evening of July the 19th, but for those of us who will be keeping at the fast of the fourth month, we'll actually start on the evening of July the 19th and fast until the evening of July the 20th. Now, I know it's a little bit confusing for those who are new to the sacred calendar and how our days reset at sunset. The day ends at sunset. That's when we get a brand new day, just like man gets his brand new day at 12 a.m. When the clock strikes 12 a.m., his days change to the next day. Well, ours change at sunset. So when it comes to this fast, for those of us who will be abstaining from food, we'll probably have dinner, even an early dinner on July the 19th so that we can abstain from food or at least certain foods until the evening of July the 20th when we'll have dinner after sunset. But that brings me to my next point. And that's what it is that we are supposed to do when it comes to fasting. Now on this calendar, I try to give a lot of information, but one thing you see only a scriptural reference for, and that is Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13. Now that particular verse is talking about the importance of the Sabbath day. But when we look at the entire chapter 58 of the book of Isaiah, it talks about fasting and the correct way to fast. Now, many people only think about fasting as abstaining from food. But when we read Isaiah chapter 58, we see that our father says that's not a proper fast at all. And he wants us to actually do charitable deeds for our brother. Like you see there in about verse seven, eight and nine. This is the biblical chapter that gives the most detail when it comes to a proper fast. So when we're thinking about the fast of the fourth month, we should actually reread this chapter, understanding that dealing bread to the homeless, bringing the poor into our houses and giving them clothing is actually what our father expects us to do when it comes to fasting. And the Third Testament also talks about the charity that we would perform for our brother as being one of the most important things that we can do as far as preparing ourselves for the events that are to take place. Doing charitable deeds actually gives restitution for the errors that we have committed in our lifetimes, even those that we have forgotten about. So doing charitable deeds can actually cleanse away those stains that are on our spirit, making it easier for us to survive the tribulous times that are to come upon us. In other words, the more charity we do for our brother, the less tribulation we will have to go through personally. So 
the fast of the fourth month is actually a great opportunity to do so a great opportunity to do good deeds for our brother so let's all take advantage of this as we are remembering these holy days of the Lord now I feel the need to mention that these days of fasting are not feast days or at least mandatory feast days we don't hear about a command to keep these days in the scripture in fact Zechariah chapter 8 is the only time that we hear about all four of these feast days in a single chapter but does that make them less significant well let me show you some scripture that I believe adds to the significance of these particular days and the end times now the first hint is when we look in Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 18 when it's talking about the Lord of hosts but let's look closer at verse 19 where it's also talking about the Lord of hosts which is a phrase that a lot of people believe point to the end times when it's mentioned but notice here that it says the fast of the fourth the fast of the fifth the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness now this particular part is significant how it's talking about the house of Judah because our father has revealed to us and we've done several classes on who Judah actually is in the end times. And what it boils down to is that Judah are those who are actually keeping the feast days. I'll give you links to those videos so that I don't have to go through all of that again, proving that when the scripture says Judah is actually talking about those who have their garments washed in the blood holding these palm branches, meaning those who keep the feast days. But what I do want to bring to your attention is how Daniel references these same days here. Let me show you what I mean. We'll come over to the book of Daniel and chapter 12, which is talking about Jacob's trouble. Well, when you look down in verse 11 of that chapter, you see it start talking about the timing of these events. It says, and from that time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Now, where it's talking about here, this daily sacrifice being taken away is actually talking about the same events that we read about over in 2 Kings in chapter 25. Verse 1 says, And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all of his hosts, against Jerusalem, and pinched against it, and they built forts against it round about. What this is talking about is that King Nebuchadnezzar pitched against Jerusalem in the 10th day of the 10th month as he started his besiegement. And then in verse 3, you see it's talking about in the fourth month did the famine prevail. So what we can put together here is that he started his besiegement in the 10th month and refused to allow the people to have food so that in the fourth month of the next year this famine prevailed and in verse 4 you see that it was during that time that the city was broken up the reason being that all of the men of war and even the king tried to escape the city turning it over to Nebuchadnezzar well that all went down in the fourth month well, you see down in the 8th verse and the ninth verse that it was in the 5th month that they actually burned the temple down. And then you start to hear about events taking place in the 7th month later on in verse 25, which rounds out all four fast days being talked about in the same chapter. The thing about it, it all started with verse 1 and the 10th day of the 10th month. Now, we can read about this exact same event over in Ezekiel chapter 24, starting at verse 1. The 10th day of the 10th month. This was the day and the month that Nebuchadnezzar came against Jerusalem. Well, you can see this day mentioned again over in Daniel chapter 1. As it's talking about how King Nebuchadnezzar, in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, carried part of the vessels of the house of God into the land of Shinar, into the house of his gods. In other words, this is the daily sacrifice being taken away. 
and is what the angel is referring to when it's talking to Daniel as the start of this Jacob's trouble. It started with the daily sacrifice being taken away. And then in verse 12, you can see when it ends 1,335 days after the abomination of desolation was set up. Now, here is a table that I created with all of the biblical information related to dates of births and reigns of kings and all of that from Adam all the way up through Nebuchadnezzar. In fact, it reaches in through the end times with the prophecies of Daniel. But you see here that the Bible gives us the exact year. So with that, we know the third year of his reign was in 605 B.C. Therefore, 605 B.C. is the year in which the daily sacrifice was taken away and the year that we use to calculate the prophecies given by Daniel. So we plug that date into what we see in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 11 using 605 B.C. and adding 1,290 years plus one year because there was no year zero. We end up with the abomination of desolation being set up in the year A.D. 686. This was the year that the Dome of the Rock was constructed on the Temple Mount there in Jerusalem. This dome set up by the Byzantine Empire was actually set in the most holiest place on the earth, the Temple Mount. And it was during this time that Jerusalem actually became desolate of all Israelites because if they didn't follow the Messiah's instruction and flee when they saw this abomination of desolation, they were actually killed and destroyed there in Jerusalem by the millions. But anyway, coming back over to the book of Daniel, chapter 12 and verse 12, we see that if we add 1,335 years to that date, we're actually supposed to receive a blessing. Well, when we do the math on that, that actually takes us to the year 2021. So could this be talking about the year 2021 when it's talking about these fasts of the fourth month being turned into a day of joy instead of a day of fasting? Well, I'm not so sure only because the prophecies and the dates start with the 10th day of the 10th month first, not the ninth day of the fourth month. So we would have to have some event to point to for the 10th day of the 10th month in the year 2021 to fully expect something significant to happen along the same lines during the fast of the fourth month. So if nothing that we could point to happens in the year 2021, then I believe we should fully expect something along these lines of this blessing that we hear about in the year 2022 after the 10th day of the 10th month that falls in about January of the year 2022. But whether it's 2021 or 2022, what we can expect to see here is some type of joy and gladness for those who keep the commandments like we read about over in Zechariah chapter 8. It says joy and gladness and cheerful feasts, which to me sounds like that blessing that Daniel was talking about in chapter 12 and verse 12. So even though we don't have a commandment to keep these feasts, we will remember them knowing that one day this will be our days of joy. This appears to be the time in which we, the children of Israel, will get that blessing at the end of Jacob's trouble.